Hello, hello, hello. It is I, Unseen Strike. And today at Dawn of War Stronghold, we have another great game coming up. Let me load into this bad boy for you guys here. Oh, is this some rectangles? I think it is some rectangles. Here we go. We have a 1v1 on Fata Morga. Another fan favorite map. We have rectangle, rectangle, rank, rectangle on the Imperial Guard versus <laughs> Korea uh, as the Tau. All right, triple rectangles coming in here. Very interesting Imperial Guard scheme. Going infantry command first. Okay, very interesting, good sir. Double guard into a tech priest. Uh, and over here we have Korea. K King Ka 013. Twitch streamer, maybe check him out. Hey, how's it going? In case you see this one day. Um, all right, we have Tao. We haven't really seen so much Tao. Interesting color here with Emperor's Children banner. Uh, we don't see too much Tao. Extremely strong heavy infantry and in their fire warriors. Really crazy, super super strong. Um, a lot of jetpack infantry. Very strong early game rush if you can get the Vespids in the right spot. Um, very high damage faction. Uh, Weaker in the melee department, okay, until you get some crude auxiliary out, kind of block some shots. We already see a fire warrior team coming out. Normally, you would see a Tau commander, so this is an interesting little change up. Let's see what he does with this fire warrior team. 210, one of the more expensive uh, heavy infantry squads early game compared to Space Marines at 190, getting Space Marines out there. Uh, Guardsman coming out as always, getting his eco down. F command squad already out for rectangles cubed. Okay, Tau is expanding. Let's see here what the Imperial Guard player does. Um, in my opinion, the Imperial Guard is the weaker matchup here to the Tau. Tau commander coming out 250-55. Yeah, in my opinion, um, the Tau have a little bit better tools uh, in the early game compared to the Imperial Guard. I think once Imperial Guard Tau get tier 2, it starts to shift into Imperial Guard favor. Um, you start getting some of those Chimera out, some Sentinels, a Basilisk or two. You really shut down the Fire Warriors. Um, even with Drone uh, Harbingers, I believe are still tier 2. It's been, it's been a while since I've played Tau. Um, but in tier 2, the Imperial Guard just have a little bit more strength with the Priests coming out to kind of rush melee. Um, Guardsmen start getting grenade launchers. Once you shut the Fire Warriors down, the Tau really has to do a little bit more work to make it, uh, make it happen. And look at this, Imperial Guard rushing for the Tau Commander immediately, gets the Psyker up so he can mine war. Tau cannot melee, this is crucial, this positioning for these Fire Warriors shoots uh, in for free. I'm going to switch over to um, the Tau actually and go to the field of view, I want to see what we can see here. Goes for the single target DPS there, this is why the Psyker is such an, uh, an oppressive unit added to the command squad. Commander is going to go down. Mm. He prioritizes the worker, which is the right move. Stop the eco, but he's gonna lose. Looks like the psyker that the commander refocused here. Where did this guardsman squad, the long con flank? Um, I would have liked to have seen him decap those guardsmen while he had them. Hides in the corner. I'd like to put the guardsmen here for a meat shield. Um, and again, oh, that's why there's a commissar running to me. So this is where going into tier two, if you don't cut down enough of these guardsmen this tower, you're gonna have a bad time. Um, he flies away, so he lives. Tower is still shooting, and he's over here harassing with stealth suits. A bolter turret did go down. Tau is definitely on the back foot here. Uh, where is, is he getting? He's getting his second fire warrior team. These two drone kills that that were placed on the Tau is really holding them back a little bit. And this is not good. You do not want to get your fire warriors killed. They're very expensive. That second squad coming out on the hill, though, should help him. Priest goes down. This squad is limping away. And here we go. Tau Commander up on the high ground here should help him kind of push back. This listening post upgrade should help shore up his defenses. That commander, I don't know if he was lost or if he healed to full health. I want to say he was killed because healing back up to full health that quickly is, is unprecedented. And the stealth suits are doing their job just calving up around the map. As long as these fire warriors live, the Tau is still in good shape. Um, once it goes tier 3, I think the Tau have the edge over Imperial Guard. Again, this is all personal. Um, I just think once you get in tier 3, depending on what you pick as Tau, uh, but the range upgrade, if you go, uh, I think it's Montka. Or maybe it's the other one. It's been a long time. It's been a long, long time since I played Tau. 
Tau can upgrade their Fire Warriors depending on which path they go. To have range across the map, the ethereal control can be out of this world. Uh, reinforcing these Fire Warriors at 70 rack a squad is very expensive. He did put one more on this squad, and he's got to bring this squad back up to fighting strength, which he does. Tau Commander still lived through that, so this is, again, Tau is in a good spot here. Imperial Guard, let's see what they're doing. Solidifying his hold on the map, puts his two generate, three gens. Okay, so he's heavily invested, and he's not tier two yet. So he's just building out his economy, taking his time. I do like this color scheme. I think it's nice. Commissar looking very intimidating in the middle of this little squad of guardsmen. He wants to check out the Tau, see what's going on. Command squad on the right flank taking a lot of DPS, but he sees the Tau is pushed over here with most of his troops. Listening post was upgraded to tier 2, so the Tau is investing quite heavily in his LPs. He's got this one tier 2, this one tier 2. On the other hand, the Imperial Guard player has one. And that's it. But he has more gents. Going four gens in tier one. This is crazy. There's the tier two upgrade. So by the time all these generators are done, he's gonna have enough power to immediately drop uh, a machine cult uh, or a, uh, a vehicle factory, and then probably get a two chimeras uh, ready to go. And that's gonna kind of really put a dent in the tower forces. Again, those mass chimeras can be tough to deal with. It generally forces you to either a well, you're gonna get the missile launcher on your, your Tau commander, and then B, your stealth suits are gonna need either the sergeant, so he can get the EMP burst, or the fusion blasters. So right now, switch over to the Tau side. These fusion blasters are extremely strong versus vehicles. This squad gets a jetpack, so you can jump right on top of vehicles. And very nice for picking off basilisks and real expensive tanks. Tau commander, again, escapes with just the... the Tip of his battle suit there. Stealth suits jump out again as well. Again, Tau extremely mobile. Um, gets the heavy flamer upgrade. Great for fighting those big guard squads. And this is a good spot to be in for the guard player. He is tier 2 right now. And let's see what the first thing he does is. There's the mechanized command. Tau is... Let's take a peek. Tau is now going tier 2. So they kind of work like the Eldar. It's not like a direct buy this building to go tier 2. You just kind of build the right buildings and you tech up as you go. This works as their armory and tier 2 building. Um, you get some really nice upgrades out of there. Stealth suits taking a brunt of that. But this Fire Warrior is here. And again, as guard, you, you can't push that. For 6. So, so there's 12 Fire Warriors here. They will melt through going real quick. This snare trap is super nice to kind of limit the mobility. Um, he's peeking up these fire warriors here. Okay, guardsmen get executed, but here comes the plasma rain. It's coming in. And I want to keep an eye on this guard player of when the first... He's teching right into Basilisks. Okay, so here we go. So, Basilisk teched, but he goes for a Chimera set. Interesting. Maybe he doesn't want the Tau player to know immediately he's tier 2. He doesn't want to show his hand immediately. He does have enough for a Basilisk. Basilisk is 250. And there's another Heavy Bolter turret. He's really locking this area down. Heavy Bolters are also detectors. If he puts his Basilisk here, he should be able to fire on this side of the map pretty safely. Basilisk coming out. 150, 250. Still has enough eco to get. Gets a Priest. Alright, so he can pop Invincibility on one of his squads. His Command Squad has a Priest as well. Tile Player. Going for his vehicle beacon, so he's a little bit behind the guard player, but fire warriors always have a way of evening out the fights if you put them in the right spot. Okay, here we go. He's going to drop right on these poor fire warriors. He decides not to. A lot of plasma fire, just kind of seeing what's going on. No one's capped the top critical location. Rectangles to the third has the bottom left. Nobody has mid. Okay, just kind of peeking around, seeing what's going on. What is going on with this color scheme? Oh my goodness. I like it. I like it a lot. I like the cyan or turquoise you got here. Okay, Priest comes out, getting the tier 1 power upgrade. A lot of float going on for the guard player. Makes me think he's getting ready to go tier 3 right away. Nothing else coming out. He's upgrading some heavy bolters with missile launchers. Spent all of his power. Yep, there it is. There's tier 3. Tau, on the other hand, is going for Barracudas. Devilfish can hold two Fire Warrior squads, so that's his frontline infantry secured away against the Imperial Guard drops. And look at this harass. I like this. The Imperial Guard player going with double priests. 
Make the tower player have to look over there. And there's the missile launcher. Bam! Not too crazy damage, but if you let it pick away a few more salvos, it'll go down quick. Basilix is firing. Really nice position to put the Basilisk. Middle is controlled. Okay, so Barracudas are coming in. We've seen these before. A very generalist aircraft. Not the greatest at, at anything, but it can do everything. He did show his hand. These priests got a lot of value. They took down a listening post, and they're going to see Barracudas coming. So, he can't jump the Basilisk artillery. There's already too many turrets here. There's the armory for the guard player. He is tier 3 in about another minute or so. Trying to snipe the Basilisk, and this Barracuda is just as expensive. Gets the kill, and he's out. Barely, barely survived. Stealth suits are going for the fusion blasters. Has the stealth suit commander, so they have an EMP to stun vehicles. And now the Tau player is cleaning up on these priests, resecuring his right flank. Now the ball is in the Tau court. Where do they go from here? Another devilfish. Interesting, interesting. Just kind of holding his time here. Um, don't really want to let the guard player go tier 3 so quickly. I want to keep an eye on the guard player. Does he go last cannon here? Stop that snipe again. I'm trying to pick off these stealth suits. They could be a real pain in the arse. They'll snipe listening posts very quickly. Forcing the guard player to buy a lot of turrets and play it real day, uh, really, really safe. I want to see if he's going Kasserkin. There it is. The Kasserkin upgrade. Oh! Uh, it Did it finish? Uh, I can't be sure. I forget what the flags look like these days. Um... Okay, gets another Basilisk, so another 250 power spent. He could have teched that into Le uh, Lehman Russes at that point. I don't think the, there's no real major ground fights happening. So I don't think getting another Basilisk was the move. But he made it. Priest numbers are increasing. And we're in a bit of a Cold War stalemate. Guard are now making their push. Let's see if Tau jumps out and, and just melts this squad. And there it is. Sergeants are on these fire warrior squads. Double sergeants. So I think that's two grenades, if I'm not mistaken. Look at that. Melted that squad. Basilisk fires out. And what does the Tau do? Tau's getting tier 1 upgrade. Don't see the tier 3 building yet. Tau can, again, tech two different ways in tier 3. Um, very different uh, upgrades and such for their faction, depending on where they go. Um, either Montka or... Jeez, oh, I don't remember these days. It's been so long. I hear it. I hear something coming down. There it is. Or call you on. So they're going patient hunter. So he's going more in. It unlocks crew towns and crew toxes. You get some crazy upgrades on your fire warriors for extreme range. Um, and the imperial guard is slowly massing. The Kesserkin are out with their priests, so they get invincibility. Does he have any upgrades? Unknown. We're gonna say maybe. Imperial guards massing. They can start pushing now. Tau looking real light. Pathfinders are here. They can put a uh, uh, kill everything in this squad ability on some units. Um, the Hunter's Mark, I believe it's called. The Devilfish gets CC'd. Everything's hiding back inside, but the Devilfish can't move. Caster can pop their invincibility, so they're safe for now. And there's the thump of those... Oh, what was that? There's the thump of those Hellfire uh, last guns, or Hellfire last guns, whatever they're called. Again, these are currently Scion, uh, Tempest is Scions. There's the kill finder mark from the Pathfinders, and look at the damage. Invincibility is up on the squad. I believe he juggled the, yeah, he did. He juggled one priest to the other to cast it twice, which is super smart to do. He needs to get this priest out or a way to reheal, or maybe he'll let it die and rebuild it. Barracuda is pushing, nothing to really kind of punish it. There's a Sentinel in the backfield. Not sure where the rally's going. Like to see this, but the poor guy is going to get melted here. He does get a lot of nice scouting information. Kills the Devilfish. That is big. If he could snipe this Barracuda as well, is he paying attention? He is not. Sentinel goes down. Gets a Devilfish. Free Fire Warrior kills there. Uh, and there's still these stealth suits kind of lurking around. They're waiting to get their pick on something. Another Devilfish hiding here. Mobilize for full-scale war coming. Tier 3.5 from the guard. Um, we'll see maybe tier 3.5 for the Tau soon. Get the coalition center. Tier 2 requisition increase coming. And there they are. He's revealing the cell suit squad is here. Uh, even though they're anti-vehicle weaponry, they'll still punch through guardsmen like butter. I have the Tau still selected. I just want to see when these upgrades come in. 
Uh, here we go. Tile armor increase and tile range increase. Makes your fire warriors just absolute beasts in combat. And here we go. The, the, this is where it gets tough for the Imperials when, when the tile goes down this path. Um, the trade efficiency is really tough. He has a Vindicare out. And is it going to get sniped off in the first engagement we're seeing? I hope not. Vindicare's really cool units. Sub-commander unit, sniper rifle. Um, can pop per turbo penetrator rounds and, and snipe and do some really crazy damage versus all targets. Tau just needs to get one or two dis just really uh, decisive strikes here. Um, and they're in business. Basilisk sees something it doesn't like. I actually want to check. Does, did he do it? He did it. He jumped in there with his stealth suits, but the Imperial Guard player had everything here ready to go. <laughs> Basilisk still goes down. <laughs> Not a good day to be in the Artillery Corps. He had everything here ready to go. Auto cannon put on this heavy weapons team and everything. He was waiting for it. I guess he killed two stealth suit squads fully upgraded, so it was worth it. And here comes the Lehman Russes, and I see the Mars Pattern Command. Another vehicle command goes down here for the Imperial Guard. He's going to start ramping up heavily in the Tier 3. Doesn't have many listening posts upgraded. Where is the Tau? Didn't rebuild this yet. Oh, boy. Tau wants it, though. They're slowly pushing in. You can see that sniper. Morale breaks very quickly when you're getting pretty much two-tapped on those snipers. Oh, another poor fire warrior goes down. And the Tau is trying to push against this Imperial Bulwark. And the Sniper is just picking units off. The Kastikin are getting free shots. Here we go. The other unit the Fire Warriors could have picked was a Shield Drone. Um, and it's a super strong buff that the whole squad gets a nice shield. Um, I don't see many grenades going off. I don't know how worth it was to get those Sergeants. But let's see. The Basilisk, or is that a Lehman Russ, is now... Nope, it's another Basilisk. The Madman. He's chipping away at these turrets. He's slowly chipping away, but the Basilisk is going to make this fight very difficult, especially with the Sniper. Almost every shot of this man is picking off a 70 wreck model. Uh, that adds up quick. Let's check the eco real fast. 150.79 on Tau. 163.105 for the Imperial Guard. Uh, let's see what's coming out. We got a Lehman Russ. The Bane Blade is cooking right now in the kitchen. It's about 70% done. It'll be here momentarily. And this is it. This is now do or die for Tau. I still don't see many vehicles. Drone Harbinger, interesting choice. Try and tank some shots. I just heard the Tau Commander die. I don't know if this is enough for the Tau. This is looking real scary. There's not much here to just destroy any of these Lehman Russes or the Bane Blade. Both stealth suit squads did go down. It's just the eco of the Tau is not looking strong enough to kind of fight here. This Bane Blade is going to drive right through the center of the Tau formation. While I do like Drone Harbinger, you need, I, I believe it's like, what is it, 10, 15 power per drone launch? You'll rip through the, a bank of 1,000 power in, in moments. There's the GG, rightly so. Triple rectangles, rectangles to the third. It says more rectangles, so rectangles to the third, rectangles squared. We're back in geometry class here. We're deciphering the area of those rectangles to figure out what's happening. Um, interesting game. I, I don't think the Tau player had a, a, enough there at the end. I, I mean, obviously, but I don't know if he kind of had a plan. I always kind of say keep your mind open in these kinds of situations. Don't go in and say this is what I want to do. I want to do X or Y. Um, you know, maybe having a general idea. I feel like he teched into tier two and three and got those really expensive upgrades but they didn't really go anywhere the imperial guard player was a little bit stronger mechanically i feel swapping those priests to get the double invincibility buff on the casterkin was huge um there was just no way for the tower to kind of prevent this there is a cool unit I i've had it used on me it's really infuriating um out of the vehicle beacon there's exploding drones they're not the little small drones they come in squads you burrow them and they i'm pretty sure they blow up like a mine they, they count as a vehicle, um, and the Imperial Guard doesn't have the most amount of ways to deal with vehicles besides like Sentinels or, or Heavy Bolters and Last Cannons, but there's, there's like three in a squad. They shoot up and explode, and they do extremely high damage. To, they're, they're meant to be anti-infantry, but I've seen them rip through Lehman Russes in seconds if you have two or three squads of them. Um, super cost-effective. 
great ways say he put those those burrow drones here um or maybe over here on the side and kind of picked off like these chimera run buys or these priest run buys i feel like the imperial guard player kind of kept the pressure up the whole game and we didn't see this lp get upgraded uh we didn't really see many upgrades on these other lps the tau eco was just always always hurt on top of that the guard player had a lot of these critical locations capped and that kind of boosted his eco um and imperial guard turrets are just mvps they're, they're strong one of the strongest turrets in the game um and look at that he had so much eco he didn't even feel the need to upgrade these that's a lot of lost potential income although he did have a lot of map um but yeah i, I feel like the tau player didn't use his full roster um i've seen some really scary tau armies come out of the woodwork and just demolish imperial guard anyway let's check the stats real quick we'll take a quick gander 96 to 54 rectangles was all the way that requisition gathered you'll see about a thousand more but that power difference is 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 where the uh game is being told here research count pretty even i would have liked to have seen the shield drones on those fire warrior squads give him a bit more of a fighting chance um when you're out shooting guard i just don't think he had enough time to throw those grenades maybe if he was facing orcs or something you throw those grenades and they do a little bit more damage than space marine grenades i don't believe they cc but they have a slow if i remember correctly um they just they do they do good work uh don't get me wrong but again i, I don't think those fire warriors truly paid off on uh, the imperial guard player was just one step ahead so that was me done for the day i hope you guys enjoyed the video let me know what kind of battles you'd like to see in the future and i will see you guys next time give us a like shoot us a subscribe let us know what we can do in the comments for your next battle what you want to see have a nice day